Hello. I wear a lot of hats, and not only for some protection, but also for the various roles and tasks that I take on. I'm an herbalist, a scientist, a biologist, a researcher, a field crew lead, a meditation guide, a yoga instructor, a dog trainer, an artist, an adventurer, and more. And as someone who is not quite so neurotypical, I, I can creatively and seamlessly find the connections between everything I do and take on. And I put my passion, heart, and soul into everything that I do. And I'm sharing my personal story and work-life anecdotes as my opinion and my idea. I am an employee of the federal government, but I'm here speaking as myself. And to all my teachers and supporters, thank you for listening. And with that in mind, I would like us all to do a mindful exercise together. It's going to be a quick visualization exercise where we can think about mindfulness as bringing our attention and awareness into the current moment and being fully present. So, if you're ready, you can start to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. We're gonna take three big, deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. So at the bottom of your next exhale, inhaling, filling up your belly, your chest, biggest breath yet of the day. Open your mouth, sigh it out. Two more, just like that. Inhaling, filling up belly, chest. Open your mouth, sigh it out. Last one, biggest breath yet. Inhaling, holding at the top, taking one more sip of air in. Open mouth, sigh it out. And let any container or body of water drift into your mind. Water sustains life, every form of life in our world. Can you feel this water rejuvenating and revitalizing you? Feeling your shoulders release away from your ears, your brow unfurrowing, maybe your jaw unclenching, allowing space in between your teeth, your tongue falling away from the roof of your mouth, allowing your body to relax. And imagining a tree. Maybe this tree is utilizing the water source you thought of, naturally pulling from that water source, or maybe you're facilitating watering this tree. Imagining the texture of the bark, noticing the breeze in its leaves. This tree is thriving from the water source. Do you know what kind of tree it is? Do you know its Latin name, its common name, its indigenous name? Or do you know it without a name? And you can start to open your eyes and come back into this moment, noticing how you feel. Do you feel more centered here in this present moment? Allowing our body and mind to relax, we can start to cultivate mindfulness as a cognitive practice to bring our awareness into the current moment. And take a moment to recognize that you just studied a living thing. You just did biology. You studied how a tree, in your imagination, was utilizing water to thrive. And science isn't so different from mindfulness here, where science is observation in a systematic way to reduce human bias. And mindfulness, as we have just practiced, is this awareness without judgment of the current moment. And we can take this farther to use mindfulness to understand the current state of the world. We can use mindfulness to understand and acknowledge where each individual person is and where the current state of the world is 
in order to grow and change as individuals and as a society. So these ideas aren't so different from one another. And I get to connect the two of them. And I'm realizing that my normal everyday life is not the typical normal everyday life for most people. I get to roll around in the dirt and look at bugs and investigate how trees are doing in the forest. I get to witness amazing scenes of nature, but I also witness the harder facts about the world. Things with nature, like the fact that tree mortality is increasing globally across the world. Things like climate change, forecasting and driving extreme weather events, and only predicting more extreme events. Things like century droughts that happen, century floods that happen once every 100 years, like we saw here in the Central Valley. And the decade-long drought that we've been experiencing in California that has led the land to dry and heat up and burn in catastrophic wildfires that has impacted all of the populations in the forest, especially our iconic giant sequoia. The giant sequoia tree had never been recorded to die by fire previously. It was a species that needed fire to reproduce. It thrived in fire. And yet, these catastrophic wildfires killed 15% of the entire giant sequoia population in two years. And that is an estimate, since it's hard to count all of these trees. But imagining that statistic, 15% of an entire species gone. That would be the equivalent of a billion or more people of the eight billion people on Earth, or three times the US population gone. So you can see that this research I do in the field is fascinating and heartbreaking. And I use mindfulness to understand the science. Understanding the facts can be hard when you have a connection with nature, with a connection of what you're observing. And it's hard to take out any human emotion or morality when you're observing these things. But you don't have to. You can use mindfulness to witness your response to the science, to the facts, and still remain systematic and scientific in your observations. We need to use mindfulness in order to consciously act instead of react, especially when it comes to science and research. And the more that we know, the more we have yet to find out. So this conundrum of science and mindfulness, working hand in hand, reminds me of a conundrum I feel in the backcountry. It's this feeling of awe I get at vistas while I'm backpacking with everything I need to work and live on my back and walking on trails that people have built with their bare hands on the sides of mountains. It's an amazing experience and I'm so lucky to be working and living out there. So this feeling of awe I get, standing at these vista points and just beauty of nature, is this idea of realization of how small I am, how small my impact is in the world, how small my physical being is, how short my life is. And yet, I get to witness this glory that wouldn't happen without my attention. And this contrasting empowerment and humbleness goes hand in hand. Being able to feel empowered, 
to make a difference while also recognizing how small we all are. And so we can take this thought further by recognizing how impactful our attention is, how impactful each individual person's attention is, and as a collective, as a society. Humans are global creatures now. We are a global society. We can make a difference together. <clears throat> And so, we can use both science and mindfulness here to understand and acknowledge where every individual person is, fully accepting and acknowledging every individ individual as they are right now, while leaving room to change and grow. We can recognize and acknowledge the current state of the world and know we can do better. We can use our attention to acknowledge the fact that we are part of nature. We are part of the ecosystem. Living in the world we've adapted as humans and also the ecosystem of nature around us. We are part of that ecosystem. As global creatures, we can live in harmony with the ecosystem. We just have to recognize and acknowledge those moments of awe that we all experience. And with this in mind, I want you to feel empowered that your attention can make a difference, that you can fully accept yourself in this moment right now so that you can grow. We can do more research to fully understand where we are in the current state of the world so that we can grow, be better as a society. We can use our attention to cultivate a world where we can thrive with the ecosystem around us. And we can be part of nature. <laughs> So thank you.